Hi, it's me again, and there's more talk about the BBC going to some kind of two-tier payment system. And it's, it's interesting, and I think it could very well be the way it's going to go in 2027. It's the way I'd like to see it go, I think. But now someone else is talking about it, someone who I used to respect and don't really anymore, Andrew Neil. Have a look at this headline. Andrew Neil says, BBC must scrap TV licence for new model. Hard to use to pay big salaries. Andrew Neil has called for the BBC licence fee, which provides almost three quarters of the broadcaster's funding, to be replaced with a hybrid model. Yeah, that's the way I think it's going to go, some kind of hybrid model. And the way I see it is just go commercial. Just go commercial. And scrap off half the channels. You don't need BBC 4, you don't need BBC 3, you don't really even need BBC 2. Do you? Just have BBC TV channel and BBC News channel make them commercial. And then all your new stuff and all your great new stuff you put behind a paywall on your streaming service and your iPlayer or make your own thing, BBC Plus, whatever you want to call it. Charge people a monthly fee to use. You want to watch EastEnders? You've got to go over there and watch it. Or you can wait till Sunday and there'll be an omnibus on the BBC TV channel, but it'd be full of ads. Perfect, right? Everybody wins. People still get broadcast TV. We still have a national broadcaster. Why we'd want that, I don't know. But we still have it. They still have the news channel. It's being funded by commercials. And I would imagine... Commercial companies will be queuing up to show their ads on the BBC, so there'll be no problem at all. And they've got the streaming service over here, which they don't just sell to the UK people, they can sell it worldwide and generate vast amounts of income a la Netflix. Let's see what Andrew's got to say about it if we're on the same team. I haven't read this fully yet. The former BBC presenter said the licence fee is not enough to pay huge salaries and that a two-tier funding model would be best. He said, market economies are finally hitting the BBC. The situation is systematic. Well, the BBC are known for wasting a lot of money. They could tighten their, their belts a bit. I mean, ITV don't spunk half the money that the BBC do because they have to work for their money. You know, they have to make good stuff and they have to tighten their belts and try and be profitable. Whereas the BBC can make all the mistakes they want, get all the office buildings they want, all the staff they want, pay Lineker whatever they want. Because they know next year they're going to get another 3.2 billion quid. They don't have to worry. You could run a country on 3.2 billion quid, let alone a media organisation. It's crazy, isn't it? Mr Neil, arguing the BBC cannot afford to pay some of its competitors' salaries, told The Times, The licence fee is an asset because it's guaranteed money, but it comes with a price. A variable funding strategy, he said, was a combination of guaranteed public funding and subscription. The former should go towards news, current affairs and the arts, the latter towards shows such as Strictly and Line of Duty. Well, I could have seen that coming, really, couldn't I? Andrew Neil, who left the BBC, not because of money, obviously, to set up his own news channel, then walked away from his own news channel to go and join Channel 4 for a big salary, arguing that the BBC can't afford to pay salaries. In other words, you could have had me and kept me BBC if you could afford to pay me. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of respect for Andrew Neil, to be honest. I never liked the man that much, but I think he's wrong there. So what he's saying is there'll be some kind of guaranteed public funding. In other words, a media tax, and it will also go subscription. Now, there are some countries in the world that, where they have the TV licence, and the national broadcaster that the TV licence goes to fund, that it's either a tax or mandatory payment or, you know, the same sort of subscription way we do it, but... The national broadcast also shows ads. That's having your cake and eating it, right? And that's what this is. So public funding and subscription. So your public funding, you'll pay a, a mandatory tax. I don't know what they call it, five or a month or something on your pay slip. And that'll go towards keeping the BBC afloat. But if you want to watch anything good on the BBC, not that there is anything good, but you know the point I'm trying to make, you'd have to pay a separate private subscription. That's not having your cake and eating it. That's taking the piss. That's what that is. So, yeah, I mean, he just wants more money, obviously, and he's telling the BBC, you can have better people if you can afford to pay them more. But a lot of the people at the BBC don't justify their own salaries, do they? A la Lineker. How does he justify that amount of money? You could get any ex-footballer there for, what, 50 grand, just because they want to be on the telly. You know, you know, maybe a bit more than that, but it's still cheaper than Lineker. So, yeah, I don't see his way of doing it as the future. I like my way of doing it, but I know many of you have different thoughts on the ways you want to do it. So let me know what you think about it. Give me your best ideas of how to fund the BBC going forward. Or do you just want it scrapped off completely? I think that would be winning. Just bye-bye, BBC. No more national broadcaster. Off you pop.
that's also a nice option, which I quite like. But let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.